the food we get to eat. Yeah. To be yeah. honest, it looks pretty darn good. What All right, boys, we're rolling. Rock and roll. Sweet. Well, here episode we are, another two. episode of the Ice Team podcast this season. Super excited to have our good friend Nate Nipper with us. What's going on, guys? If you follow bass fishing, especially in Minnesota, you're going to see his name on the podium. He's uh, cashed lots of checks. Used to. I just had a child. I don't fish anymore. Speaking modestly, of course. <laughs> um, so he, he lives and breathes the bass fishing world. I've learned a lot from him just in the couple of years we've worked together. Uh, he wears a lot of hats at Clam. Um, I'll let him dive into some of that, but he certainly wears a lot of hats like most of us. So we're going to jump into this a little bit and kind of hear a little bit about Nate. Nate, you've been a fishing fanatic since you were a kid. Yeah. Uh, take us back to young Nate Nipper and what made you tick in this world of fishing. Sure. Um, I, I mean, my story is maybe not as traditional as most. I didn't really start fishing until... I was a little later in life outside of running the two-piece rod on the handlebars, biking to the Coon Rapids Dam with a can of corn yeah. and a pair of pliers in the backpack, just trying to catch whatever bites, really chasing carp. But um, my fishing like bug really kind of came into effect when my dad got a part-time job at Gander Mountain back in Maple Grove. Mm -hmm. um, that store was something special back. I mean, we're talking late 90s probably. And there's just a good group of guys there. And my dad was, he's a lawyer and just wanted some part-time fun and got a job over there. We met a bunch of guys and I started hanging out with some of those guys and they kind of showed me the ropes. I got in my first tournament when I was probably 15 years old. It was the Minnetonka Classic. I fished with my buddy Adam, who now lives in Montana, but... It's a good one. Yeah, he kind of showed me the ins and outs of uh, the bass fishing tournament scene and I was just like everybody who gets into tournaments, you kind of bit right away and you can't shake it. So um, went hard at that and kind of decided to devote my life to it from there. So um, went to, decided to go to school for marketing, um, went to the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota, stayed local. Again, didn't really fish throughout college either, you know, just um, didn't really get back into it again until I graduated and got boat and um, that was when I got my first full-time job was, again, full circle, uh, Gander Mountain's corporate office in St. Paul. So I was a category manager for the online side of business. Okay. Or, sorry, not this round. This round, I was a category manager's assistant. Let's not get it twisted. I was I was fresh, wet behind the ears. <laughs> so I was an assistant category manager at, at Gander, and I was actually on the hunting side, um, trying to learn just the ins and outs of e-commerce. And then um, from there... I got my old boss at Gander actually left. He got recruited to start a new business. It was a Stierka Optics. It was a new optics startup company owned by um, Celestron Telescopes out of California. They started a new um, sport optics brand, but they wanted to do it out of the Midwest. So they did it in Burnsville or Egan, whatever it was. And he called me like six months after he left. We went and had lunch and... Um, he, he took me on board as kind of just a general coordinator was my title. So we were all kind of doing everything. We were a manufacturer importing optics from overseas. We did all the marketing and sales and all that stuff in house. And we were kind of all doing a little bit of everything. Um, met my wife now, currently back then, obviously she wasn't my wife yet. And uh, we knew we wanted to move out of the Burnsville area. So I quit that job, got a job up at the boat center up here. In uh, Ramsey, Minnesota, mm -hmm. was parts and service manager up there for a few. Uh, it was a pretty short stint, like a year. And then another old colleague, again from Gander Mountain, called me when they started back up at Gander Outdoors. And he asked me if I wanted to be the category manager this time for Boom. fishing. So I went and started a job as category manager for the fishing. Again, the, that's just a, you know, it's an online merchandiser for all the fishing and marine for Overton's and Gander Outdoors at the time. Okay. So kind of like uh, what you think of as a buyer, um, but for the online side of business. So I was in the meetings with some of the bigger brands and fishing and learned a lot of the ins and outs of the business side of things. And then um, we all got laid off. <laughs> so, I remember that. Yeah, Gander's, yeah. I mean, they got a history of, of some silly stuff and some mass layoffs. And I was part of one of those. And um, actually our good friend Hanskin reached out to me and said, Hey man, I know you got laid off. 
Um, I was just at Joe's and they need an internet guy. So went over there and I was at Joe's and um, I was there for, I think about two and a half years, again, kind of doing online merchandising. I was also the marketing manager over there. So I was doing our ads and doing all that stuff and working with some other agencies. And I built a new website for Joe's that was, that was kind of fun. So like you said, talk about wearing a lot of hats. I've kind of, I've kind of seen a little bit of everything in this industry, but it's always been very much, I want to be in the outdoor industry. I've thought about, you know, trying to get out of it. And every time you just get pulled right back in, it's Uh, it's where we all want to be. And um, again, just to where, how I got here was at Joe's and, I had I was living up in Albertville at the time, and it was you know an hour commute on a good day, and mm-hmm. I did that for three years, and it just got tough, you know. And we knew we liked it up here; we wanted to stay up here. And I started thinking about what's my exit strategy, and um, I think actually it might have either been Hanskin or my old buddy Winkler um, sent me a posting that Clam had posted, and. Um, I reached out and I had known Matt Ski through the fishing mm-hmm. scene. So I shot him a text, a screenshot of the post or whatever, like, hey, man, can I get an interview for this position? And yeah, we had a phone call like a week later and then I was in here and the rest is history. It's been awesome. Happy. Uh, I want to jump back quickly to Gander Mountain. Yes. Because uh, I remember, and you talked about Coon Rapids Dam. I grew up in Coon Rapids. Yeah. So riding the bike to Coon Rapids Dam was like, weekend gospel absolutely right? I feel like everyone does that oh it, it was so much fun i just saw soby put a video out just this week on creek fishing and he caught some carp and i watched how excited he got because the biggest fish on his video was a carp he's like yes you know i can i can remember those days but gander Mo and i remember it was the jam absolutely back in the late 90s like that place was hopping i mean you had the one that you worked at uh you had one in fridley uh you had one in I don't remember. There was a hand, there was one yeah, down in Mankato when I was in college down there. The Baxter yeah. one was always a staple on your way up. Was that was a little, little bit later, but yeah. But one question I had, like, I don't, I don't vividly remember this, uh, and you might know more than me. Were they fully, they, they have a lot of bass stuff. Oh yeah. That, I they think, did? okay. I think that's kind of where Gander Mountain shined locally, you know, cause Cabela's was still a thing a little bit, but like their, their assortment was a little bit more, um, national based at the time, they've gotten a lot better since, but at the time Gander did a really good job of regional assortment for bass. So they had some of the stuff that nobody else really had in store. Some of like the Lake fork stuff, uh, just off the top of my head, just, they had the cool stuff that the guys wanted. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Gander was, that, that was the spot. I mean, I remember we'd stop in there, like we'd go to sports shows. Ice, the St. Paul Ice Show, Northwest Sports Show, whatever it might be, right? That's what we have here in the Twin Cities, my dad and I. And then we would leave the show and go to Gander and make all of our purchases because they would match a lot of pricing at the shows oh, yeah. back then. You could see it, touch it, walk out with it. You'd have to carry it through a convention hall or something. Sure. And I, I really remember when Gander was Gander Mountain being mm-hmm. a big thing, a big deal. And uh, it's kind of cool that uh, it came full circle for you and you came back there again. So... But yeah, Nate now was working uh, here at Clam Outdoors, uh, director of quality. Correct. Yep. Um, wearing a lot of hats is an understatement. You heard his whole life. So the good thing is that coming here to Clam a handful of years ago, uh, Drew can attest, we wear a lot of hats. So you yeah. came in with a ton of experience on hat wearing. For sure. sure. It definitely helps you in this regard. I think it's cool to know, and I think I knew this, maybe not, how much marketing background you have. We may have to lean on Nate <laughs> just a hair more here on the marketing team, knowing fully that. It's been that a extent. while that you guys know better than me. That guy, that stuff changes. You know, yeah. I, I did oh, yeah. a social media certification class a, a, after oh, I graduated. So when I was working at Stierka again, wearing all the hats, um, they were like, I was doing our social media, but it was like, Hey, you know what? My alma mater, whatever has a online certification. I can go take two, two classes a week for two months and get certified. So they put me through that. And that was one of the things that they kept teaching us is like a lot of the stuff you're dangerous. learning right now, you're not really going to use in two weeks. Yeah. And that's the case, man. I'm, I'm already lost, you know? So yeah. you guys already know more than I forgot. And it's, it's just ever changing. That's a tough, tough side, but 
you know, the real, the basics are still there. The ground roots are, are still in place. And I, I know a lot about that stuff, but you guys are doing a great job. So I think it's cool how, um, amongst everyone here at clam, I would say like, we all love fishing so much that mm-hmm. we can do everything. We can learn a bunch of stuff about just the business side of stuff from past experience. But in the end of the day, like when someone grabs this rod at a sports show, I think we could all just be like, oh yeah, the noodle rod, yeah, this thing's great for this purpose, this and that. Like it just comes so natural. Right. You know what I mean? I think that's a great point is the natural like part of it. You know, everything. it you just comes easy. It's like you hear it once, done, got it. When you, when you actually use the stuff, it makes it a lot easier to know. Bingo. The only mm-hmm. thing I will say, the hardest part about being in the outdoor industry, and this holds true from every position I've ever held, is... Sometimes you have to check not just your ego, but your preferences yeah. at the door because fishing so personal for everybody. Everybody has their own way of doing it. You like your own set of rods. You like your, I like my, and everybody's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So you have to try to leave. And like I said, it is sometimes it's your ego because everybody thinks their way of doing things is the best. And you have to sometimes forget that. And no, no, we have to make the best thing for everybody. For the masses. Yeah. And Don't get me wrong, we've also done a really good job of getting into a little bit more of that niche stuff, which we'll talk about later. Like, I'm looking at this 35-inch noodle right here in front of us, and that's probably not everybody's favorite rod, but there's a lot of people that are going to be pumped about that thing. I like it. Yeah, Matt and John Holmgren fight over that one. Yeah, Holmgren, you're you're listening. Uh, Another thing about Nate, I know we're going to jump into, like I said, he's the director of quality, uh, which handles a lot of things here. He's also very influential on the all-terrain brand, and I think that's cool because you heard about his bass prowess, his bass history. So he's also helping us with design implementation of certain concepts and things on bass jigs. I'm working with Mike Davis doing that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's exciting, at least from my perspective, talking about his selfishness and ego, right? Like, we want the coolest bass jigs Heck yeah, possibly. We do. And Drew and I have joked on the side, well, it's pretty cool knowing Nate's kind of entwined in some of those decision-making process because he's going to pick stuff that he knows works and if what he thinks works well more than likely we're going to like it so we're not going to jump too far into the all train i don't believe i mean you certainly can mention it if you want doesn't matter to me but the big thing is getting excited about ice fishing we're here it's october obviously we don't have ice yet Mm -hmm. but the buzz is happening if you follow social media trends you've seen a big tick uptick in ice fishing conversation people are excited they're thinking about it. we're just a few weeks away from our first ice fishing show of the season in ramsey minnesota um pro day is is behind us so people are already jacked up talking about it getting excited our pro staff which leads us into what you're really jumping into and diving into right now is rods reels and yep. combos that clam and before you jump in i'd like to just say something maybe to well, I'm talking about ego to boost your ego our rod game has changed drastically since you've been involved. And I mean that because you're dedicated to it. You're focused on it. You're paying it to the attention. I think you, you made a comment, the nuances of it. And I think that's what makes a big difference. It's a competitive field. For sure. Extremely competitive field. And I feel like as we're not a custom, and you can't see me unless you're watching in quotations, custom rod shop, right? Those are popping up all over. They're doing a phenomenal job building rods. But I think for the mass producer rods out there, we are absolutely right there at the top. And uh, I'll be honest, when I started here in 2012, I would 100% not have said that. I did not want to even touch the rods that we made at Clam. I thought they were extremely inferior to everything else that was out there. Now, that's pretty much all I'm using. Awesome. So let's jump into rods and reels and combos and skip all some things Uh, you can take it whatever direction you want i know you literally start from the beginning to the end on the implementation of a design to why we do what we do um let's have some fun talk rods and reels i mean i see some of my favorites here right now yeah i just grabbed a few of the new ones but we can even start a little back again i when i started here this wasn't what this wasn't the full idea um the full plan for my position was obviously kind of a bridge between sales marketing and the R and D team. So, um, it just kind of seemed like a natural fit to, for me to take over some of the rods, reels and combo stuff. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a passion of mine. I, I really, I'm a little bit of a geek when it comes to tackle and rods and reels. So, um, it's been a good fit and, and back to kind of what you were talking, just the overall process of the nuances. Um, 
I think that was really where where I can kind of help put a little bit more on the table. I, I have a little bit of an attention to detail. Like mm-hmm. I said, I'm always tinkering with things, looking at how can we improve an action? How can we tweak this handle to make it a little bit more comfortable? Um, and really, the, you know, the main things to look at, that you're, you know, we have a lot of stuff that's already in existence. Mm-hmm. So there's really kind of it, it, how do we improve what we already have? So coming up with new ways to, to tweak what's already out there, uh, you know, expanding the Katana line is a prime example of that. Um, and then really listening to the pros. You know, mm-hmm. we've got such a huge team of pros, and we're silly not to use them. They all have their preferences. And, again, sometimes you have to filter. One guy sure. wants one rod. But that, that one you're holding there, that, that new Katana combo with the longer noodle, that's one that is exactly what we're talking about, the the team of pro staff we have, that's probably the most common request I got asked since I've been in this role was for a longer noodle. So this year we're launching a new, they're either 34 or 35 inch, depending on what model, but we, we added a longer noodle in pretty much every series we have of rod. Yeah. So I got a chance to use those all three. So we added a longer one. If I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, Katana in your hand. Yep. Spooler elite. Or, or spooler. Straight drop. Straight drop. Yep. Straight drop rod and scepter. Yep. Scepter and um, ice team carbon. And ice team Just carbon. Just a rod yeah. for this year. Yep. Yeah. And they, I'm a long noodle rod guy. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest. Like you talked about, everyone has their preferences. I heavily fish a noodle rod with our pinhead. And the last year, our pinhead pro, it dominates. And obviously, now with the Tika Flash, it dominates. And then those are some of the baits that are in my hand probably 90% of the time. That rod loads up. It's got a solid backbone. You found a great bend blank for this. Um, obviously, people that are watching, it's not in their hand right now, but I encourage you to stop by a show or a retailer and put a bend to one of these. Uh, they are extremely nice. Uh, I fished all three. I don't know if I have a favorite. It's super tough for me. I mean, the Katana is probably your lightest. Is that safe to say? It feels I, like the most lightweight I would say in, in the hand, hand that... That suka material just yeah. makes the whole thing really feel nice and light and cohesive, and the and the fly style guides really help. Mm-hmm. It's just the whole thing, yeah. the The whole idea is lightweight, sensitive, um, and I think that that really hits the mark on that one. And then you know, there the the rest of them are carbon blanks, but all our noodles are glass. Mm-hmm. You just you kind of have to do that to get that noodle tip. Um, but like we said, we played with a lot of different blanks to make sure we landed on this, and I think. I think people that pick this up are going to be impressed to hear that it is a glass rod with just, it feels like your extra fast action, you know, carbon summer rod. Sure. It's so crisp and so light for a glass rod. Um, you get that sensitive tip where you need it, but then, man, you hit that backbone right there. Like you said, it's such a good pinhead rod. And and those guys that are fishing outside hole hopping, I think that was kind of the idea, but not just, not just that for a longer rod, but having – having more rod to fight the fish too. Yeah. I mean, noodle rods, they're fun. You land a fish, you fight a fish on a noodle rod. It's fun. I I think, I just think it's, it's not too whippy. It's not too stiff. So if you catch a bluegill, that's a moderate size fish. You're still like, Hey, this is kind of fun. And then a big thing in my opinion is it it gives anglers uh, visually something to look at and it suppresses your jigging sequence as ice fishermen were extremely aggressive. Yeah, like that's we a shake good point. that lure, we bounce that lure a lot, and what that does is it suppresses some of the stuff you're doing down below, and I think it can help a lot of fishermen catch more fish. I think one thing that's kind of cool about a lot of the rods that we have is we have so many actions and lengths mm-hmm. to them. Like I know when I was first getting a nice fish, and I was like, "Oh man, I need like a crappie rod," mm-hmm. and, you know, and I just get like a smaller, lighter action rod, and I'd use that for like my dead stick, my jigging rod, mm-hmm. my small spoon rod. When then like you kind of learn a little more and then you're like, oh, like maybe I don't want such a noodly rod for a drop kick, so to speak. Cause like, I want to pound that little yeah. jig, right. And get the action out of it. And then like, I remember a couple of years ago, I got, I think two straight drop combos. Mm-hmm. One was the ultra light with the spring bobbers. Like mm-hmm. that thing was really whippy. And that was like a great little dead stick rod for bluegills. Cause like you could just set the thing. It actually like stands up like perfect like that. So I just like put it on the ice and then yep. all of a sudden I'd look over and I'd be like, oh, I got a bite. Like my spring bobber is like barely down on like a finicky bite, you know? And then meanwhile, I'm like 
pounding a pinhead or something or a drop kick with like a medium light action, I believe. And it's like, man, like you guys are, we're bass heads. Like Mm -hmm. you have a chatterbait rod. Like yeah, I have one rod I use for wacky rig. You know, what I've I mean? got two chatterbait rods exactly. for depending and on like how I'm throwing that. That's chatter- all yeah. you throw them on. So like, it's cool. Like, like I'm a, I have like three katanas, and I like, use one for each spoon. You know, but like, to your point, like the ice fishing thing, ten years, fifteen years ago, it was pretty much everybody mm-hmm. had like one, maybe two rods. Yeah, yeah. and ice has really followed suit with the open water. With oh, for sure. Everybody wants to have that rod paired to that lure now. Everybody's got mm-hmm. just the vast array of actions and lengths and spring bobbers yeah. and man, different it's, kinds it's of spring super bobbers. Super cool. Yeah, an ultralight spring, a medium light spring, a light action yeah. spring. It is nice. Drew was he's talked. I remember your straight drop combo. You said you're you know whippy dead stick for panfish. He actually catches walleyes with that all the time. And I've yeah. seen it happen many times, like saving the day on a photo shoot where like walleyes aren't biting, let's go catch a bluegill, and then boom, catches a 25-inch well, walleye. The, uh, happened more than once. I think that was on the spooler leap. I was going to say the straight drop reel, dude, like when a fish is pulling on that, that thing is like so buttery smooth, you'd mm-hmm. almost think you got a spinning reel. It, it. Yeah. it really is you know? one of the best strikes that I'm you like, can do. It's insane. It's, it's just like you just set the hook, and it like doesn't take a lot to set the hook on a tiny little jig, mm-hmm. and then you just like let the fish tire itself mm-hmm. out. And, and you, can, come. you can kind of use your hand or finger yeah. to kind of feather that yep. too with those – the those inline reels end of those straight drops too. I'm just like, I, if I set the hook, like I'm going to yeah. catch the fish. I'm not concerned. Right. You know? We should talk inline reels for a bit. It's, okay. It's a huge trend. I mean, it's not anything new. Uh, I mean, it was kind of developed by Pat Smith at Thorn Brothers years ago. He went to the fly fishing shop, yep. grabbed a fairly expensive in the world of ice fishing, Cortland fly reel for 60 bucks back then. Yep. It was like, that's crazy. And I remember he brought it over. And put it on a custom rod, and it's like I'm going to use this for fi- ice fishing. No line twist, whatever, whatever. Yep. And fisherman called him, did an article with him, and said, "This is crazy. You're using an inline reel. A, a company did not make them yet in the world of ice fishing. You had to buy them from a fly fishing outfitter, like a Cortland or something." I, and he I used remember, it, yeah. and then next thing you know, they started coming out. So it's it's conceptually not overly new, but I'd say in the last five years, it's taken off for sure. And That's, maybe you want to touch on why that is, the advantages to an ice angler, and, and give a little attention to an inline setup. So I think kind of to your point, to start with the advantages, just like you said, the reason why, what was a pad over at Thorn Brothers started doing it was the intention is the, the line twist. So especially big bluegills, um, they get bait shy. It's unnatural for your little tungsten, you know, five millimeter jig, whatever you're throwing down there drop kick with the silky, it's unnatural for that bait to be spinning. Mm -hmm. And inherently, you look at the way a line goes in and off of a spinning reel with it being oriented, you know, vertically, it comes off in coils. You've all seen that. So those coils have to, you know, come back to rest. So when your bait's in the water, you'll watch it spin a little bit. Well, when your spool's, you know, horizontal or however we want to call this, that line's coming directly off the spool. There is no twist. Right. So that's really the the original benefit of running an inline reel. Um, some guys have found that, like I talked about, the drag, you can really back it off and use your thumb or finger to feather it, kind of like you do with like a schoolie reel. Sure. Um, so there's another benefit. And then just the drag washers alone by nature, again, are big. So you can get a nice big drag washer in an inline reel um, and bigger coils, you know, just, there's a lot of benefits, but, um, I th- the main one is definitely the straighter line, but, um, we can talk about this or we can yeah. still talk about yeah. just inlines in general, but yeah, I think, I think, I mean, some are watching, some yep. just listen to Sorry, this. I keep forgetting. Yep. And so the one mate has in his hand is, is the spooler elite and that's a two, three to one gear ratio. Maybe Correct. talk about gear ratio. Cause that's a common question we hear. I think there's a lot of anglers out there, with all due respect, that quite don't comprehend what that means. Sure. So what does it mean to have a two, three to one versus, let's say, our standard spooler reel is just yep. a one to one? Yep. Maybe explain that quick so people yep. understand that, that. That first fly reel that you know Thorn used to to run a inline, the it's great, but you're 
you're stuck fishing pretty dang shallow because of that one-to-one ratio. And what we mean by that is you get one spool rotation per handle turn. Yeah. So if you got a fish running, you hook that 26-inch walleye that Drew caught in four feet of water and the thing starts taking off under the ice, that's hard to catch up to because you have to be the mechanism to reel that thing in. So you can only be as fast as your hand is. Yeah. Um, where the spooler elite really shines and where this thing becomes such a beast that it is, is you get a lot of those same benefits. I mean, the profile's virtually the same as our regular straight drop reel. You still get that smooth drag. Um, but now we, we figured out a way to put a gearbox on here, and now you get 2.3 spool rotations per handle rotation. Yes. So... I only have to spin this one time for that spool to spin 2.3 times. And it just means you can now fish a little bit deeper. You can catch up to your fish a little bit faster. If you get your bait taken off and you need to re-rig, you can do that faster. The benefits are just, they're huge. And I think we've seen avid fishermen have really picked up on that, that point is the spooler elites a beast. Now it's, it's, Really a great reel. That's my favorite reel, period, for ice fishing is a spooler elite, and I'm happy. And we can talk about some upgrades we made to this, but one thing I'd like to touch on, on the one-to-one. So I, I run a tournament circuit, and a lot of the guys run a one-to-one. And I've kind of, like, picked their brain a little bit as to why. I mean, don't get me wrong, the spooler elite is dominant mm-hmm. still in the scene there. But they say they, especially in shallow conditions, like you said, yep, they don't want the faster line pickup. Makes because sense. that they want they don't want to reel that fish in too quick. They feel like the speed of a one to one is the right balance on fighting that fish in shallow water. So you're not pulling it in too quick sure. and risk losing it. Yep. But you're still pulling the fish in. And that I, that can make that ticks. Like Yeah. Like the, you said, everything's school, got a reason. World, They're right? all tools, man. Yeah. The schoolie world, yep. right? Same concept. Our spooler is basically a very, very high quality schoolie reel. Correct. Yep. One to one, better drag, better like, built. I've gotten so efficient with just the standard straight drop reel. Like if you're using a tiny little drop kick like this and you're down 30 feet. So number one, you pull out the line just like that. That would right? be the one downfall of, yeah. of so, I, and it's not necessarily downfall, but just to back things up quick, when we talk about all I've said is good things about inline reels. The negative of an inline reel generally is the fact there is no, you can't just drop your bait. You have to let your bait I, out. I personally think that's a major advantage because I know that I'm pulling out six feet every time and I'm guiding my line down the hole. You know, might have slush in there or whatever. Whereas if I open the bale, I got springy line dropping down, right? Like I can feed this line mm-hmm. through. I'm dropping as fast as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. And I know three pulls gets me down 18 feet every time, right? Yep. And then when I reel up with the one-to-one, I just like do that, just spin it. That thing's reeling pretty fast. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not a tournament guy, but like we whole hop and do all kinds of stuff. And that's plenty fast for yep. me. And then I, like we were talking, you just can fight the fish a little better with the slower uh, yeah. ratio there. And it's just smooth. Like this is my personal favorite. I like Over that the- one. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I love the Spooler Elite. I really do. Um, but I just, I feel like, this combo here, the straight drop with mm-hmm. that parabolic bend is like my jam. Like and I'm not pr- losing and a fish. And for the price, what is that, a $40 combo? Um, um, maybe, I don't, maybe 50 I don't remember. where. I think you're right. I think it is 50 but we're best right bang, in there. Best bang for yeah. your buck. This thing's money. I like the fact that you have to pull the line up by hand. And, and the reason I say that is I think as ice anglers, we oftentimes fish too fast. Mm-hmm. We flick that spinning reel bale, and we bomb that lure down to the fish. And I think, especially in the world of panfish, which is, let's be honest, that's what we're using these inlines for, I would say, most of the time, unless you're Drew and you're catching massive walleyes. Yep. We're not fishing the entire water column the way we should. Yeah. We're not. We're going right down to the fish we see on our vex. We're not feathering it down. Some of the biggest crappies I've caught have been on the fall. For sure. When I'm not even marking them on my locator. And it also causes us and forces us to focus more on what we're doing. And for, I like it. You, I know, get, you guys are the... You guys are the 5% or the 1% or whatever because you get that. Like, you understand that, you know, when I bring up the fact that that may, might be a negative, you're turning a negative into a positive. You guys oh, yeah. know how to do I, I guess I'm saying there's a lot of, you know, new fishermen, mm-hmm. new people that maybe aren't as experienced and don't understand that that's where I'm referring to the yeah. fact of it being a negative. Yep. Some of them don't, you know, they just want to go have fun fishing with the kids for the weekend and that's where maybe that's a disadvantage but i absolutely love how you guys you know you kind of turn that 
what what some may perceive as a negative into a positive. I think based on, well, Dave Gens always talks about like being efficient, right? Like that's his whole mm-hmm. motto. And I mean, now with like forward facing sonar and everything, like we're not popping as many holes. Actually, we're not right. dropping down as much. Like we're dropping right on him every single time. Hopefully. I mean, me, I am. <laughs> I don't know about you. No, definitely not me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't think you need to like, I, I love the one-to-one. Like I've got plenty of pike while like nice crappies and this combo is my jam and yeah. that's my, man, like that you said right there. you do have just a little bit more inherent smoothness with yeah. eliminating a gearbox and the i mean balance on it we have improved the gearbox on the new spooler elite to be smoother than previous versions oh, for sure but there's still no replacement for a one-to-one as far as pure smoothness that reel is exactly what it is yeah. simplicity and, and i like the balance like this is a balance yep, counter right. weight right for yep. the handle like it's thought through you yeah. can just if you're a right-handed reel you can just flip it around like that yep. go out the other side and so and you can do that with the spooler elite too i don't know if everybody knows that but it is reversible yep. yeah um so it does have one way it's smooth and one way you have drag all you have to do is back this off and there's an actual clutch bearing and you just pull it out, turn it around, put it back in, yep. and then put the whole thing back together. And now, instead of this clicking, this is going to be smooth. And there's the a video on YouTube back. for that. Perfect. I think it's on our on our YouTube well, channel. Did and we mention the improvements on the Spooler Elite yet? No, but yeah. we sure can right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Talk I do about think that before, quick. though, we should... Yep. I don't want our, our listeners to think that a spinning reel is dead. So, Correct. like, I mean, I have spinning reels on my long noodle rods, too, when I'm hardcore chasing basin crappies. Mm-hmm. And it's the, the the Griffs of the world, the, the Adam Griffiths, the Cropper Chronicle guys, yep. that will show you that too. So if you watch their videos, they live and breathe that spooler leaf. Don't get me wrong, but you'll see spinning reels too because when you're chasing basin crappies in 35 feet of water and they're 10 feet off the bottom and they're running around like missiles, to your point on the disadvantage of an inline, that's where the spinning reel shines. When, Sp- you're, when you're bombing that pinhead down, you got to get down exactly. right now. That's where I'll switch to it. And a lot of it, well. again, like we're talking, everything is a tool, and you match the tool to the application. Um, spinning reels do tend to do really well with some of your spoons. You know, a, a you know vertical presentation that you're maybe, not worried about spin. Correct. Yeah, yeah. with pinhead, you don't you don't really worry about that thing spinning as much as you would a drop kick. Um, and that's that's kind of how yeah. I run things. Is walleye fishing too? Like yeah, bigger mm-hmm. stuff like like if I'm going walleye fishing on Red Lake, I. I do not bring my spoolers <laughs> no. straight up. I'm like, I need the best drag possible, yeah. a little more backbone, like I'm a higher be, gear yeah. ratio again. Yeah, I might be yep. reeling in a bobber stop through on my dead dead stick or yep. something. Hundred percent agree. Well, let's let's talk newness. I mean, okay. So, my favorite reel at Clam Spooler Elite, mm-hmm. and you improved it several different ways. Yep. Let's touch on that and let let our listeners know what we got cooking. Sure. So the the first one is just. Purely cosmetics. You'll see we did we redid the logo on there. It's just a little bit more modern. Um, we have three colors. The classic gunmetal that you guys are all familiar with, that didn't really change. Um, but this year we added a bronze, which I'm holding here for the viewers. Match my truck. Yep, exactly. Oh um, he did it yep, on purpose. Yep. I think that matches the rust on my towel, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then the acid Valid. or chartreuse, you know, the bright, bright chartreuse, if you want to be a little bit more loud. Um, so there's, there's an offering now for everybody as far as color wise goes, um, performance wise. Um, and I, I think this is performance, but a bigger paddle handle, EVA Absolutely. handle, um, that, that old handle was, it just felt a little bit small in the hand. And I was actually tweaking my older versions and putting a bigger EVA handle on them. And I noticed how much easier and how much smoother it feels. So that's a, that's a relatively small one, but it adds to the look and the performance. Um, The other thing, as we mentioned, we did add another bearing to the gearbox. So now it's going to feel a little bit more complete, a little bit smoother yet than it used to. Um, Not quite as shaky when you're, when you're running with it. Um, The other biggest one that's jumping out at me would be the spool itself. So the old spool went pretty much all the way down to the center. Um, you could put 500 yards mm-hmm. of two pound mono on there if you wanted to. It was, yeah. it was pretty crazy. And that's another thing as far as um, gear ratio goes. Uh, you're going to get the most line per turn 
the more full you have your spool. So if yes. you have an older spooler elite or even the straight drop and you're only putting 20 yards of line on there, you're really not getting the maximum uh, gear ratio out of that reel. So you either want to put backing on um, to bulk up that spool a little bit. And this goes with spinning reels, bait casting reels, inline reels, any reel you have, the more full you have, the more line you're going to get per handle crank. Um, but like we said, what we did with the new spooler elite was we shallowed up that spool. So mm-hmm. it's, it's about 30% as deep as it used to be still plenty of line for anything you could want to do. You could almost go lake trout fishing with this thing. It's still plenty of capacity. Um, but now you get your regular 50 foot, 50 yard spool of line, put the whole thing on here. You're fine. You don't need to put backing. No. I probably still would just a little bit, depending on what pound test you're running. Um, but you just, it's, you get a lot more line in per crank just to really utilize that gear ratio. Um, one other thing I think, and maybe I'm wrong. You quieted it down the drag. Correct. Yep. Sorry. Bit, I, which I know remember. people like. So you can, I don't know if you guys can hear this. That's a good sound. Yeah. Um, the old one was really aggressive. That was another one. Again, listening to listening to what our team of pro staff has to offer. That was another one that I kept getting is just that drag is so loud. Guys can yeah. hear it from across the lake. Because when you pull the line up by hand, yep. th- that's the noise it's making too. Correct. So we quieted it down. And by doing that, it's also smoother drag now. So the drag is smoother, quieter. Yeah, just um, a few things that I think are going to make a big improvement mm-hmm. for you guys out on the ice this year and years to come. I would agree. It's uh, my favorite. Now it's been upgraded. It's that one reel for sure every year we feel like sells out. Yeah. And for oh, good reason. Yeah, I know yeah. by middle of January, as a marketing team and social media team, Drew and Kayla sitting here, we're going to get a spooler elite. It's like it's got a cult try, following you know, for call sure. Call around. And I feel like um, we added three new colors or, or three new options this year, inv- bulked up inventory, yep. listening to our consumers. Now, I'm not going to sit here and promise you right now in October that you will find one all season. You still want to buy what you see and grab it, right? That is just kind of the nature of the beast in this world of ice fishing because it's a seasonal way of selling, a way of thinking. But, uh, yeah, you'll want to definitely do this. And I think it's cool that you gave these options. You talked about you have your standard gunmetal, the same one you've always had, kind of a neutral. Then you have your black and bronze. You have a a high-vis, something a little louder. Anglers in general, and this can stem obviously from the bass fishing world, they like to accessorize. For sure. They like to look cool. They like to be different. They like to have a different color handle, different color tape, this and that. This plays right into it. So Pat Calmerton, we have a loud reel for you. <laughs> oh the black God. and lo- the acid green. Um, I'll be honest. I picked up two of each. Mm-hmm. The second they came out, I bought two of each. I plan to run them. I need another reel like I need another hole in the head. But... I like these upgrades, and I find myself slowly trading out my old uh, Spooler Elites to my kids, to my neighbors, to yep. my nephews, to whoever, and continuing to upgrade to these new ones. It's one of so, those things that's kind of hard. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the older version. No. It's still one of the best ice reels ever made. But, yeah, man, you start fishing with this one for a little bit, and then you pick up one of your older ones, and you're like, man, I kind of miss yep. that handle. I kind of yeah. miss that smoother drag. There's, they're just, done. they're pretty bulletproof too. Yeah. There's not many moving parts, things to go wrong. And ice freshmen were hard on our stuff. Yeah. Like if you go to the UPL or even just your average guy on a weekend, you know, this stuff gets just beat up, iced over. And the, there's nothing better than when you, you know, get to a new spot or something. You just think just full of snow and yeah. ice, you just rip it out and it just mm-hmm. all flies off. And like, all right, we're good. And 90% Perfect, of the time, know? if one of these doesn't work, and I've seen this from personal use, um, 90%, 99% of the time, if you're like, oh, my reel shot, it don't work. Almost always there's some line stuck in it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's going to happen no matter what you do. I mean, it's not, it's not a, a newbie. Oh, you don't know what Correct. you're doing. Happens to me yes. all the time. Like yep. Line gets stuck in there. Drew's playing with it right Literally now. It, one screw holds Correct. on the whole gear yep. box and you can just quick pop. I do this to all my reels every yep. once in a while. Just like put a lot. Yeah. Pull the spool out, grease it up a little bit if you need to. I mean, there's, there's not a lot to yep. it. Like it's pull a little piece of line out and the reel will work again. That's so mm-hmm. yeah. If you're listening out there and you, you have a couple spooler elites in the garage that you're like, oh, they don't work. They they they're stuck. They they make weird noise. Mm-hmm. More often than not, there's a little piece of monofilm that's stuck in there and broke off. You don't For even sure. know it's there. You do what Drew's doing right here, pull that piece of line out, and you're good to go. Yep. Uh, I've rarely, rarely encountered a situation where my spooler elite just clearly will not work. 
It's just a little bit, a little bit of attention to detail. I remember last year at St. Paul Ice Show, we were having guy. They were sold out. I think Thorne was sold. Everyone was sold out of Spooler Elites, <laughs> and the guy was like offering to pay double for like our display yeah. model. Did you pocket, did you pocket the cash? No, I. Oh, Eddie okay. was watching me. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, I got yeah. friends already hitting me up right now saying, "Do you guys have Spooler Elites? Can I get one? I know they're going to be gone here in a couple weeks. They're it's always sold out. It is." It's a buzz. So if, yeah, if you guys are out there and you don't have one yet, I really highly recommend you try to find one. It's, they're hitting the retailer shelves. I know for I know many many retailers are starting to see their orders starting to stock up. Yep. Um, Climboutdoors.com. You can go on the website, buy them there too. We do encourage you to stop by your local retailer, support them, say hi, check things out. Uh, that's what makes makes this whole industry tick, right? Is brick and mortar keeping our retailers sure. happy, getting people excited. That's what allows us to continue to come up with new cool stuff. So I do know. Yeah, that's. You did match my truck. Mm-hmm. He did it on purpose too. It is. I'm, I, sure. I'm not lying. It literally that matches. I, I take a lot of the stylistic cues on things from the auto industry. You know, some of those guys that have, you know, multi million dollar marketing budgets to go do these, you know, find out what people think looks good. Yep. They're usually the ones that are leading the leading the trail. So I do I do tend to look for the auto manufacturers to see what kind of looks and colors and that's definitely one of them. You know, the bronze rims on the on the all black car is just looks cool, and that was honest God where mm-hmm. that came from. The inline game is awesome. I think we lead that category. To Drew's point, the the standard spooler rock solid. The elite rock solid. You will be. I I can take comfort telling my friends, buy this reel. You were like, it's kind of like Blackfish gear. Yeah. Buy the shirt. Buy the gale, put it on, wear it, and I know I can walk away from that conversation going, they're gonna love it. Yep. They're not gonna go, What did Matt sell me? What what the heck? Like you work for the company, That's, whatever you told me to buy. No, this is something that we all use religiously. Not because we work here, because we truly believe it's the best and it works. Yeah, that's the goal of all product yeah. managers here is to definitely make sure everything that hits the assortment sheet or hits the retail peg is something we're proud to use. And that's, Absolutely. that's really what we're striving for. All right. So we touched on inline reels. Uh, and by the way, if you are listening or watching, you can ask questions. We'll follow up and, and answer them on any one of these comment platforms, or you can hit us up on social media. If you type in Clam Outdoors to any platform, we're there. You can ask questions, happy to help, um, and continue to provide feedback on these podcasts. So if there's anything else you want us to touch on, uh, we can certainly do that again in a future episode. So uh, this is a this is a, a topic I love because, you know, like your history, I worked at Thorn. We all worked retail, I feel like, at some point. Yep. Many people in the industry worked at a retail store. And I got to sit there behind the walls of a custom rod shop. So attention to detail and, and rod, like you said, we're kind of geeks and dorks. It's in our blood. So, and uh, not to reiterate and beat a dead horse, but I love the fact that we're stepping up in our rod game because we're making very good stuff. All right, let's talk some other newness. I'm seeing a table full of stuff. Yeah, we talked long noodle rods. We talked start, inlines. What else do we got? Let's kind of start at the you know more affordable price points and work our way up right now. Um, so new for this year is our Bravo combo. Um, again, kind of going off of the the first thing that's going to hit is just the look. You're going to see this is cool, new, a uh, little bit more of an edgy color, that OD green. Um, the Bravo is part of our Ice Ops series, which is a new yep. thing for us. Um, we paired up with Folds of Honor, so a portion of all the proceeds are going to go to support Folds of Honor, which is a great charity. They help support our troops and and wounded veterans and all that stuff. Um, so that's something really cool, something new. And again, the the overall look with that OD green and black um, kind of play in with that whole ice ops thing. And this this Bravo combo is it's another carbon blank. Um, So pretty much there's two options really in the blanks that we offer. And by blanks, I'm just talking rods. Um, There's either carbon or fiberglass. And carbon's generally going to be a little bit lighter, a little bit crisper action. You're going to feel a little bit more sensitivity actually in the hand because carbon's going to transfer that a little bit better. So this is a carbon blank. It's a little bit more of your price point combo, but it still has all the features you want. It's a three-bearing reel. Um, really nice locking reel seat feels comfortable in the hand. Um, that's definitely going to be one to look out for if you don't want to break the bank, um, but still has a lot of performance. You're probably not used to seeing a carbon rod at that price point. And supporting a good cause. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, the next step up from there is going to be the scepter. You guys are probably mm-hmm. all familiar with the scepter. It's something we've had for, uh, I want to say probably five. It's older than I have been with Clam. I think it's about five years old. Well, this year we kind of gave it a facelift. Um, we changed the purple hits to blue to match the Clam blue look. Um, and then we changed all the lengths and actions. So, for example, we might have had a 30-inch noodle in the past. Now we got a 31-inch noodle. Okay. We actually kind of went to some of the odd number lengths instead of your traditional 24, 26, 28. Now we're more in that 27, 29, 31. I like it. Um, we've actually noticed that it, it feels good. There's actually some performance changes there from going to that one inch. Um, again, this is another carbon blank on the Scepter series. Again, with the exception of the noodle, the noodles are all going to be glass. Um, and again, we have it in just the rod or the combo. And now we got a six plus one bearing reel. So we're stepping up in the quality reel. More bearings means a smoother, longer lasting reel. Really what it does is it just kind of distributes all that stress more evenly. Mm-hmm. Less bearings, less um, less points to distribute stress, more bearings, more stress distribution. And also, obviously, we all know feels a little bit smoother in the hand. Um, they all have our SF drag system. Great, you know, felt stainless stack dra- uh, drag discs so um, you can you can pair it with anything from the smallest perch to you know big northern pike it's going to yeah, handle yeah. whatever you throw at it what i love about can i see that nate yep i love about the scepter uh rod is i had it was actually like my favorite one a couple of years ago until i ran it over my snowmobile nice the entic- happens the enticer yeah it was bad uh but anyways you can put your finger like right on the handle here so mm-hmm. if you're a guy who likes to jig like this more so than like this or however else you do it like you could you have such good sensitivity and that was a again the previous um person yeah. in this position was they developed that real seat for yep. us exclusively so that is a clan clam yeah. designed real seat with the yeah. Solid tube, yeah. um, real abbreviated handle, so you can, you know, just the ultimate sensitivity yeah. and just that nice little pistol grip. If you're like a guy who likes fishing in hard houses or little warmer environments, like this thing is money, like where you can take your, your glove off and yep. feel that rod and reel. I actually got this for uh, cabin neighbor mm-hmm. Steve. Yeah. Because he's, he's a little old, he's an old school guy and he likes fishing his hard house. He likes his spinning rods or spinning reels. And I'm like, oh, this thing is mighty. I think that scepter is definitely yeah. a, a slightly underrated. I mean, it does, is it like, does it's well. It's like a $40 rod, isn't it? Like, yeah. I, again, I I'm was not, blown away the first time I saw that. I'm like, yeah. 40 bucks the for that The price thing? point's ridiculous. And just the sensitivity. And again, those blanks are so crisp. They're just, yeah. it's such a good feeling combo. And I know maybe looking at it, you're going to be like, that doesn't look like the Tennessee handle that I'm used to, but please do me yeah. a favor. And if you're at a retailer, yeah. just, just pick that thing up and it, it's well yeah. thought out. It feels really natural in the hand, even though it might look a little awkward. It is a really, really nice reel seat. Yeah. And you can pop this or you can buy this, the rod separate, you know, without the reel and put a spooler lead on it too. Mm-hmm. Like yep. That's an awesome combo, but this thing is underrated and it's going to do well this year. I yep. think that's what I was going to say is if you're at a retail store, put it in your hand. That reverse locking reel seat yeah. super nice. Not a lot on the front side. Super lightweight. You can feel everything. I've fished the Scepter since it came out. I picked up a play with some of the new longer ones end of last yep. season. I believe that's the one that comes in a 35. Yep, that would be, be a that, that would be our longest noodle rod. Yep. Are the guide, and did great. you make the guides bigger on this slightly or am I No, nope, guides crazy? should be the same, the same as the old Scepter guides. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. But super lightweight, super uh, responsive. Yeah. Still the lightweight fly style guides. Yeah. Very underrated. I would agree with Drew. That's an underrated rod in our lineup is that scepter. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm just looking at the guides too. Back to like the fishing inside potential of this. Mm-hmm. Like you're not going to, they're a little smaller than like the katana. That was by design for yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. So outside guys like katana is jammed because mm-hmm. you got those bigger guides. But if you're inside, I mean, I've fished this outside many, many, Absolutely. many times. Yep. But just depending on how cold it is, if it's snowing, if it's frozen. A up, guide like, is going to freeze up in the right situation. Yeah. I don't care how big it is, but obviously the bigger the guide, the more time you generally have before yeah. you have to clear them out, which brings us naturally right into the katana. Um which is kind of our, this is really the the one that's kind of making us, kind of the direction we're headed with yes. the rods, reels, and combos overall. This katana is definitely what we're what we're trying to do here. Um, cool name, cool look, cool feel. We got the Suka handle, which is a scored polypropylene, so it's unbelievably lightweight and sensitive, super durable. You got um, enough grip that, and I will say again, full transparency, the 
the grip might scare some people. It might feel a little rough when you just pick it up on the shelf. But when you're out using it, it's you totally forget about it. It it actually is really nice when you have a glove on or when you get some slime. That's you got so much grip and something we did change for this year is we did sand them so they are a little bit smoother just because yeah. that was something that people were saying they were a little nervous about how how rough that scored poly- polypropylene feels but so we listened to people we sanded them down still the same lightweight handle again carbon blanks on these with the exception of the noodle um, another five plus one bearing reel with that sf drag and most of our reels will have that one touch folding handle as well, which is another thing that's super nice for ice fishermen putting them in their mm-hmm. rod box. It's just easier to to put them away and let them sit there. And then, like Drew said, we did put some bigger guides on these for people that want to fish outside. They're still super lightweight fly style guides, so even though they're bigger, they're not really any heavier. Yeah. You'll you'll feel in the hand this rod is unbelievably light. The whole combo overall is light, and then the full you know pull things full circle again, EVA oversized handle on this reel to go with the whole feel. And that rod is great insight too. So even though you have a little larger guide train, you know, it's no problem to be inside a fish trap, inside a hard house. And, and I've got to use the katanas. They're nice. I mean, that noodle rod is sweet. This, the spring bobber is sweet. Uh, I've used them on the walleye. There's some larger game katanas mm-hmm. with longer handles yep. too. Just in the rod, not yeah. in the combo. But yeah, we have a big fish series. Pike, Pike which game, have, Lake of the Woods. Yeah, absolutely. My oh, yeah. lake trout buddies are 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 big fans of the the katana big fish yeah. series rods. Last year at Baker's Narrows, we caught like a I think it was a forty two and a half inch laker on a katana. Mm-hmm. Like we had all the like the Mac rods and all these other laker rods, and I mean that thing held up perfect. And it's just so light. Yeah, Yeah, so light compared to what you're used to. Oh, my God. I feel like I'm using a flipping stick when I'm using some of those, you know, big fish rods, those those heavier-duty ones. Katana series, definitely take a look at it. It it does have... Sure, I mean, call it what is this? It, it has that custom rod feel to it. Yes, that was the plan. It has that look, that feel, and and you nailed it. It knocked it out of the park. It's a high $90 combo, correct? or Sub-100. It depends on the lengths and and actions. Some of them, That's a good... I mean... To, for yeah. rod and reel, rod like, and reel, that's setup, the thing. Yep. And you and we do sell that in just the rod as well. So I want to say it's fifty five dollars or whatever yeah. for just the rod. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I know. In, in like my bass fishing stuff, I know you guys buy a lot of really nice rods and stuff. But I'm kind of at the point where I'm building my arsenal still, and I buy like the you know the hundred dollar rods, maybe hundred and twenty dollar yeah. rods, but because I'm like I need that chatterbait rod. You know, I need yep. that cranking yep. rod. And this is kind of, these ones, these lower. Uh, Price point ones are great for that because you can have your, you know, your noodle rod, your, your uh, light jig rod, maybe your dead stick rod. I mean, it's just, it's good stuff to get into the game if you're looking to expand your arsenal. And man, I, I mean, I'd almost stack them against some of them custom rods that are twice the price. You, oh, again, the, that blank, that the carbon blanks and those things are mm-hmm. really, really nice. I, I, I would like to see some people stack that against some of yeah. the custom rods. But I mean, you talk about that straight drop rod that we talked about earlier. Yep. You no, know, that's a standalone rod you can buy too. And that is and a glass rod, but phenomenal rod for the price. Crazy actions They're, on a glass rod. Phenomenal yeah. rod for the price. Are you seeing guys use you guys are putting like other like schoolie reels on this? Oh, They're yeah. using this in the UPL and everything. All the time, right? yeah. Because we have the palm ones now, right? The twenty inch action, I think. What are, what are they? We is have a twenty two. I think we have a twenty two. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. We did we did add the shorter ones. I'm yeah. There's some stuff that's maybe getting worked on as well, but yes, oh, we did. We break? did release. <laughs> we did release some shorter ones for this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had those last year. Yep. Yeah, those things are sweet. And and the noodle rod in that straight drop is probably one of my favorite rods. And I, if I recall, it's like a thirty dollar rod, thirty bucks. And and there's companies out there selling hundred and thirty dollar noodle rods. And uh, no dig on any of those companies. Phenomenal exactly. stuff. Craftsmanship is top notch, handmade, perfect spine bend, everything. Right? There's reasons that that exists. But for thirty, I mean, you'll see if anyone goes out to my truck during ice fishing season and looks in my arsenal and my bag of tricks, I got a whole lineup of straight drop noodle rods. You're not alone either. And I use them religiously, for sure. Yeah. Nice. So katana, awesome that's an stuff. awesome one. And then we we'll bring in the big Cadillac. The big daddy. We, got yep. new, we got a new one this year. The Tatsumi. Um, so we released the Tatsumi reel last year, which is the nicest reel we've done. Um, you know, five plus one uh, shielded bearing reel with, um, I, I can't, well, we're on a podcast. I, it's, um, 
I don't know what the word for the drag is. It's got a name brand, and I'm afraid to say it, but everybody thinks of it as, you know, the stuff that they coat your pans with. It might start with a T and end with a lawn. Um, it's got a scientific name. I forget what you call it, um, but that's the drag in this reel. So the smoothest drag we have to date, um, again, shielded bearings, so it's just a nicer quality bearing than what we have in some of the other reels. Again, all that's going to do really is is – longevity wise you're going to have a longer lasting smoother reel um, we also have a little bit bigger arbor um, for again a little less line twist a little better gear ratio so you get you know your full you're maximizing the gear ratio with the larger arbor the 4.9 to 1 gear ratio but bigger spool you're picking up more inches per handle turn well that's the tatsumi reel now this year we paired it up with the rod again really really crisp action rods these are carbon rods again with the exception of the noodle um, tons of lengths and actions uh, you're going to pick this one up and this is really going to feel like what you're used to with your custom rod yeah. this has the actions that you're going to see with some of those other rod manufacturers you, you know the the stiff backbone to a lighter tip um, the cool thing that we have is a skeletal locking reel seat i know a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of the quote unquote custom rod makers out there are still using a Tennessee style handle, which is awesome. I, I, I like a Tennessee handle. I'm not knocking it at all. Obviously we do it with a lot of our stuff, but I think a locking reel seat is also really nice. You know, adds a little premium feel, um, EVA accents, and then some again, just little details. If you look, we added a little ring towards the butt of the rod and it's, sh- and it's, you know, your length and action is on the ring. Just, just little hits to, you know, take it to the next level. But really what you're getting here is the best blank we we pretty much offer outside of, you know, scepter carbon might be yeah. a little bit better. But anyway, mm-hmm. really, really crisp actions, nice reel seat, and paired with just an awesome reel. And again, you're not breaking the bank with this. It is our most expensive combo right now, but it's still less than 150 bucks for both the rod and the reel. I remember when we showed this to the sales reps earlier in the year and everyone who picked it up, they, you know, everyone, like when you grab a rod, you grab it and you, you bend it a little bit. They're like, Oh, the action on this thing is just mm-hmm. awesome. Like, which one is this? And then yeah. they heard him talk about it and like, Oh yeah, that thing, that thing is sweet. Man. We really focused on getting the best actions in going through a lot of samples of blanks to make sure we landed on the right ones. And these, yeah. again, you got it. You pretty much got to touch it to believe it, but it, you're going to be shocked when you pick this up and realize that you can get this rod and reel for what you can buy some of the other guys' standalone rods for. Yeah. And that reel is nice. It's got a, a larger uh, bale spring or a, what, what's it called? The arbor? Or, no, the spool. The silver thing. What is that called? Yeah, that's yeah, that would little, be just your bale. Yeah, a little thicker, a little more durable, larger yeah. spool, better line pickup. Little wire. You yeah. know, I've, I actually grabbed a few of those reels last year and put them on my cat rods. Mm-hmm. I guide channel cats through the ice yeah, in the wintertime. Right. And those reels and those rods take the most abuse of my entire arsenal. They're phenomenal. They work great. I thought, I thought well. you're the ones you let your kids use take the most abuse. <laughs> well, the, th- those take the least abuse because after two trips, they end up in the water. <laughs> so, yeah, those uh, – but, yeah, it's a great reel. And the Tatsumi standalone reel um, – we do sell right. I mean, Correct. I didn't. Just, yep. Okay, I didn't, that was I that sure was something we launched something. last year. Yeah, that's what I thought. And so. uh, we we liked the reel so much, and we like I said, I I was playing with a bunch of blanks and had developed kind of this rod, and found a perfect place to pair it with this reel. But the reel is still available standalone this it year. Is. Yep. I, okay, it's not just a combo. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So get yourself some of them Tatsumi reels. They are very nice, very smooth. If you're doing the walleye thing, you know the bigger game thing, even the the crappie thing. They're so very, nice very for, smooth. Yep, I was yeah. very, very impressed I, with I that. I used to be, I, I overlooked reels a lot in ice fishing, you know, prior to starting a clam. And I'm like, man, like I would, I'd take my springtime crappie reels, you know, that on my open water rods and throw them on my ice rods. And I just buy like the cheap one, you know, like the $20. I had a Gander Mountain one. Actually, that thing was pretty nice. But anyway, like the there's so many. Oh, yeah. Day. Yeah, there are a lot of different reels out there. And. I mean, different actions, the different purposes, like we were talking with the arbor size, you know, if you're fishing maybe deeper water, or, I don't know, a lot of stuff to look at basically. For sure. Amongst the There's, we got a lot of them now. There is one for anything you can think of doing really. Yeah. Um, and, and anybody who likes to do different things, some guys might like to run a little heavier mm-hmm. rod for lighter fish and vice versa. It's, 
We definitely are looking to do something for absolutely everyone and throw a couple absolute home runs in there that, that everybody can enjoy. I, I love the fact, uh, I mean, we're, like Drew alluded to it, we're all fish heads. We fish a ton when we're not at Clam. We don't turn it off. It's in our blood. I love the fact that we're really listening to pros, fellow employees, consumers, the industry, right? We're not just doing a, a me too product. We're always trying to chase the bar. But I love the fact that we really do offer everything. I don't think our consumer might comprehend the breadth of our rods and reels. So we got some stuff on the table. We've talked newness. This is like 20%, 25% of our rod and reel lineup. If, so you, yeah. you're, you're outside of this scope here in this room um, for the sake of time. This would be a four-hour podcast yeah. if we broke them all down. You have the meat stick. Yep. You have the dead meat. I Classics. mean, you, you have you long have the, stem. Yeah, Jason you have the Mitchell long Reel. stem Jason yep. Mitchell reel this year. Uh, we have uh, price point stuff for kids getting involved for twenty twenty five yep. bucks. So you have ice buster. Yeah, you have the Gen lake Spring. trout Machina yep. series rods. You have split grip rods. I would encourage you to jump on the website, dive through it. I think you'll be surprised that the rod and reel section at Clam Outdoors is more robust than rod and reel companies. Mm-hmm. So we're really kind of bringing the noise. Um, this is a tooting our own horn. I, I, I believe in it. But it's great to see that we're really kind of like, and and we got ahead of ourselves a bit, and Nate said too, like we got more stuff coming down the pipeline, right? Oh, yeah. We're really thinking. I did not know about that, Outside the, <laughs> the box. And we're coming up with more things in the next year, in the next two years, next three years. I've seen some of it. Nuances, nichiness. That is, I feel like, the trend of this sport right now. Yep. Whether it's rods and reels, whether it's tackle, clothing, you're seeing people not just come out with a pair of gloves. They're coming out with a pair of gloves for a purpose. Yep. If you look at our head and hand lineup at Ice Arm by Clam, you'll see 20 different glove offerings. And some people will say, well, that's just ridiculous. That's too many. It's just like this. It's just like golf. Got Each one everything. has their purpose. Yep. Each one has their reason. And everyone's different. Uh, and I love it. I, I think it's great. It excites me. I'm always looking at this and what's new, what's different. I think our consumers appreciate it. Um, and uh, I think we're really moving in the right direction. What else we got cooking here? I think she just grabbed the we got a, a Tatsumi reel by itself. Oh, no. We got the new hot order. Oh, she did. She went and found the real deal. Yeah. We'll let, we'll let the cat out of the bag on that one. Yeah, I think this is released now. Yeah. I think this is officially out as of Pro Day. Yep. Um. So this is uh, the Tatsumi's big brother. This is the Misago. So this is this is now the creme de la creme of the clam lineup in reels. So this is taking the Tatsumi, which is five plus one bearings, and now we got nine plus one bearings in the Misago. So we got more bearings again, smoother, longer lasting reel. Um, we got a ported aluminum spool, uh, lightweight, and a uh, cork handle. So that thing is super nice. If you just pick it up, you can feel um, not only does it look just a little bit more premium than maybe the Tatsumi, which is a great, great reel, um, but it just, it's butter now. Mm-hmm. And this thing's going to last whatever you can throw at it. It's going to be able to handle it. That bearing count is ridiculous. They're great bearings. Um, just everything. It's that, that same T blank lawn drag. Um, it's ridiculous. If you, if you have an opportunity to check one out, please do. You're going to, you're not going to regret it. And it's so pretty. It's like a, I think crane says <laughs> there he is. True. I think crane <laughs> uses that a lot. It looks like jewelry, right? Yeah. With our oh, solar yeah. tackle, put it under the glass counter. And that thing is just sharp looking. And, and this thing is extremely smooth. Um, there's a lot of reels out there in the industry. No doubt about it. There's companies that that's their claim to fame. Yep. Um, this is going to attack some of those at a great price. I, if I don't remember the exact price, it's like a hundred bucks. Yep. Yep. You're not right talking about two hundred and forty nine ninety nine. You're talking nope. about a hundred bucks. Super high end reel, especially focused on the ice fishing crowd. Larger spool, larger arbor, all the right things uh, to really give you, out, in my opinion, a very high end reel for a number of different things for ice fishing. So that's the Masago. That thing's pretty sweet. I like yeah. the cork handles. Yeah, yeah. it's again, it's just a reels, next yeah. little level in that custom feel. It's something that you're used to seeing on your, you know, $300 JDM bait casting reel. Mm-hmm. I love it. 
I'm excited. I mean, it takes me a little, I, I love my open water season. You know, we're out there doing a lot, guiding all summer. You know, my trips are coming to an end. And this is that time of year where I get really antsy for ice. I mean, I never, it never, it's always top of mind. Mm-hmm. We work for an ice fishing company. For sure. It's always top of mind year round. But then it gets to that point, usually right now with pro day behind us, with all that stuff, it's really top of mind. And Seems to be that I'm October. in the garage tinkering with my yeah. stuff. So just seeing this stuff laying out here gets me excited to go, oh, I'm going to go home tonight and try this and try that and do this and do that. And so at the end of the day, we are fishing dorks. Uh, Nate nailed it best right to start. We're geeks when it comes to this stuff. But I think honestly, Nate, that's why we come out with good quality stuff because we care. Uh, you use the stuff. Yeah, we live it. Yeah, this is stuff you would want to fish. And I think it shines through. So, man, it's been it's been great having you helping us with this project. And I say that loosely. This is not just a project. It's an undertaking. Lots of new stuff this year from Clam Outdoors in the Rod and Reel and Combo game. Lots of new stuff. you got to check it out at ClamOutdoors.com. Lots of existing stuff. I want to continue sure. to let our, our audience know this is not all, all we offer. The, the meat stick did not go away. The dead meat combo did not go away. Carbon. The septic carbon did not go. All that stuff's still here, and, and I know a lot of you love it and, and live on it. Stop by. I would encourage you to stop by the booth at one of the shows. For sure. If you're coming to the Ramsey show at the end of the month, if you're coming to Sioux Falls, uh, Dakota Angler there in November, if you're coming to the Blaine show, the new Hardware Expo in November, St. Paul Ice show, the new Wisconsin yep. show the second weekend, we're going to have some of the stuff on display. Come ask your questions. Uh, meet with one of our pros. Meet with one of our staff. Uh, pick their brain more than happy to walk you through the exact setup. It can be overwhelming. Having worked retail, you can probably attest to this, Nate. You walk into a store and, and like Drew said, I just, you know, would buy a crappie rod. And, and that, that is a very common way of thinking. The average ice angler maybe doesn't comprehend everything we just threw at them, right? They walk into a retail store or a sport troll and they're just like, Hey, I'm looking for a new rod. Well, what are you doing? Oh, I, I'm looking for a walleye rod. How are you fishing walleyes? Yeah. What are you doing? Are you using spoons? Are you using tikka minnows? Are you using How a much do you want to spend? Correct. Like there's these things. Same with the crappies. I need a crappie rod. Okay, what are you going to use? Well, I'm going to use just like five mil tungsten. Cool. Well, these are what I look yeah. at. You know, you maybe don't, don't want this, this, and this crappie rod. But if that same guy goes, oh, I'm 100% pinheads, I'm going to rock. Well, then I'm probably not going to give you an ultralight spring bobber rod. Yeah. So, and that's where it's, it comes down to. We have the right rod. Ask the questions as the consumer. Let people know, this is how I plan to fish. That is the first thing that should be top of mind is I plan to chase crappies in the basin with the pennant. I plan to chase walleyes over mid-depth rocks with the tikka minnow. And then you figure out the setup. I think a lot of us as anglers do it backwards. We grab the rod and reel, we grab the line, and we put a walleye lure on. No, no, no. What lure are you going to use? Exactly. Work yourself backwards from everything from rod to, to line to reel and you'll have a much more balanced setup. And like I said, we have, I think we literally have something at every price point, which is a huge part of it. Mm-hmm. I get it. I'm the same way with my summer stuff as I am with my ice stuff. You know, you have a technique or an application in mind, and then you just got to pair your bud, your budget to that. And we've done a great job of having literally something at every price point for anybody to get out and get the maximum uh, fun and fishing out of their time. Okay, Nate, your three favorite setups this ice fishing season, what are they? Go. Like, if you're, you're going you're gonna to hit the yep. ice, hopefully sure. in a month and a half, what are three combos you have in your hand? I'm going to take a page out of Drew's book, and I definitely like just the regular um, straight drop combo for my regular, you know, drop kick fishing, shallow water, bluegills, crappies. That's that's absolutely in my box all the time. Um, my second one is going to be the 30-inch katana noodle rod paired with the new Spooler Elite for my pinheads. Um, again, same drop kick, but really for kind of my crop, pretty crappie-specific fishing. And then the third one that I probably got the most use out of last year was actually the 28-inch medium-light Tatsumi combo. Okay. Um, I am a walleye freak. I love chasing big walleyes on Metro Lakes. You'll hopefully not find me out on Tonka because I try to find my own little sneaky spots. Um, But I love going out on Lake Minnetonka early ice. 
leech flutter spoon, you know, 28 inch medium light is that, that, that changed it for me. That is such a great combo for that, that, that bait and that, that application. So those are my three home runs. Um, but again, and that's tough to choose because I have pretty much some of everything in the box. Those are three rock star combos. I dig it. All right, and anything else we want to touch on before we cut these guys and gals loose? I mean, no, man, I think we covered it pretty good. Like, I think just want people to know that, uh, like I said, we have, we put the effort in, you know, everything we do, we, we try to think it out. We, we have weekly meetings on this stuff. We get everybody involved. We listen to the pros. We listen to the people inside these walls. We listen to the customers. We talk to retailers. I mean, everything we do is, is well thought out. There isn't anything here that's just here to be here. Um, We really want to make sure, like I said, we know everybody's working hard for their money. We want to make sure you're getting the best product possible for your price point. And uh, I'm confident that whatever that price point is, you're going to be happy with with whatever rod reel combo or um, just reel you end up with. I love it. Well, there we have Nate Nipper, guys and gals here from Clam Outdoors, our director of quality, handers all rods and reels and combos and all that good stuff. Uh, you can find them on a lake near you, namely Minnetonka, <laughs> chasing walleyes through the ice. Uh, stay off my juice. Yeah, stay yeah. off his no, juice. I'm just kidding. But, uh, so like I said, it's awesome. Dude, fish is a ton. You're seeing a theme here, right? A lot of our, our anglers or our employees fish a ton. We take great pride in that. I'm pumped. I don't know about you, Drew, to put some of these to use here in the next I couple will, of months. Man. I don't know if I... Can I really get rid of my straight drop combo that I've had for like three years now, no, though? Can, or it's a walleye magnet. Yeah, absolutely or my, don't have uh, to. my dead meat combo. Like that nope. thing's pretty bulletproof, too. Keep them all. Keep I, them I all. guess I'll have to get some new ones, too. So good stuff. I'm excited for this. Again, check it all out at clamoutdoors.com. Stop by one of the booths at the upcoming ice fishing shows. Stop at your local retailer. Give them a call. Ask them if they have some of this stuff. Don't be the guy yep. trying to buy a spooler elite from our display. Correct. Year. You might learn the Get hard them way. Early. Mm-hmm. Buy These them things sell out up. every year. So. And phenomenal Christmas gifts. So if somebody's like, Drew just bought some neighbors at the cabin, a new setup. They're going to love it. I so need this one back. There you go. Take it back. Well, there you have it. Another episode of the Ice Team Podcast. We had Nate Nipper here from Clam Outdoors. Once again, you got Matt and Drew. We appreciate everything. Go out there, have some fun. Come find us at a sports show. Let us know how we're doing. Let us know if there's something else we can be saying. Another topic you want to address, message us if there's something you want to learn about, and we'll do our best to filter it. And we got a great lineup ahead of us with more speakers and more guests at this throughout the coming months. Super pumped up for that. But there you have it. Another episode of the Ice Team Podcast. Thanks, Thanks for tuning guys. in. Looks sweet. Thanks, Nate. Thanks, Nate.